Furious Driving, proud to be supported by Diamond Bright, protecting, cleaning and caring for the Furious fleet and for yours with 10% off using code FD10. Bidding Classics, the online classic car marketplace with more cars added every week. And Lancaster Insurance cover the Furious fleet. They are one of the biggest specialist insurers in the UK covering all areas of vintage to modern classic cars and motorbikes. Follow the links in the description below. Welcome to Furious Driving and today we're putting the bad luck of the much rust we're finding in the Crown Vic and the Rover 420 estate behind us and going to a car that actually appreciates a little bit of help and one which is beyond dependable. This is the Volvo 740 GL, the tough old Swede that it just lives up to its reputation because it always just works and it's just a nice car that you can trust and depend on. So yeah, it's gonna get some love today, which is a nice change. Nothing significant, no major structural welding or significant under the car mechanicking. A few things I've been meaning to do to this car for absolutely ages, but just haven't had time to do it. But today, I'm gonna to make time and give the car some improvements. Meanwhile, I could ignore the Rover 420 GSI, which is behind us just for the meantime because right now I'm just putting a bit of stone chip paint and um, cavity wax in that rear corner that got welded because obviously I don't want to rust out already after the just you know, hours of being welded so <laughs> that will be off to be MOT'd and repaired by a garage anytime now although as I was getting the car ready to be shipped off I realized that the uh, the lower arms I'd got were actually the wrong bushes in the end um, so I've had to go back for a refund on them anyway so lucky I didn't get them off and leave the car stranded on the drive I'm sure the right parts will be found but thankfully not my problem anyway what we're going to do on this car right now so this mirror this kind of plasticized paint stuff is flaking off which is unsightly and annoying so I'm going to pop this mirror off I have got some etch primer and some satin black so we're going to get that looking super lovely i've got the radio the correct radio was repaired for me by chloe vhs chloe on twitter who does a lot of car radio repairs and uh, she did this um, made it work again for me because it was non-functional for a bit um, i've had a recent radio in here for a long time actually and the problem with fitting an adapter for a modern radio is apart from the fact it looks too modern is that the uh the dashboard actually slopes away from you uh, it's further right at the top than the bottom and so it has to have a, a forward protruding front face which means you're because you do knock your knuckles into the radio when you go into first or third or fifth, um, which is not ideal. So that now works again. The reason I left this radio in here was for two reasons. First of all, when we went to Sweden, I wanted to have an additional USB power source because this has got built in USB. And secondly, because I had to cut about the, uh, the loom on the back of it. It means I've got to uncut about the loom on the back of it, put it back to standard again. And that's a few minutes of work. And finally, I've got some not broken door pockets, which came from a viewer max i think it was wasn't it some time ago actually um means i have to take the door cards off and then unscrew these from behind because i think these have got screw holes on the back of them and i'm going to make a little addition to them to make them a bit less rattly and plasticky off cuts of the uh, headlining material from the mondeo it's nice black stuff so i gave it a bit of a, a sports sporter because it's a Ford Ford Sporter Mondeo got black headlining um, and that will then cut into there and into there make it less rattly bit of sound deadening bit nicer the only thing is <clears throat> these are actually grey rather than blue same as the uh, APOS trim here which you don't really notice the thing is though you just cannot for love nor money get hold of blue interior trim for one of these if anyone has blue interior trim um, please let me know because I need a few parts for this car I need a post I need a C post and I need an ND side trims for both the seats. Just can't find them anywhere. So if anyone has them, then please do get in touch because I would very much like to get this car complete. I'm happy to live with the slightly greyer door cards because it's down low and you don't really see it. Blue would be lovely, but a slightly wrong colour is better than cracked and held together with sellotape. And this was actually done by the uh, gentleman I got the car from because it cracked many, many moons ago. And the reason for this big push of activity with Vafer the Volvo is that uh, Barry, who came with me to Sweden in this car, is his son's prom at the weekend. He's uh, leaving school. Um, he was going to go in the Crown Vic. I was going to drive him up there in the Crown Victoria. Obvious reason, I'm not going to do that. So now Barry's going to take the car. He's driven enough miles in this thing, I think, to trust him with it. <laughs> so he can borrow the Volvo. He can take him up to the prom in the Volvo because did you know there was a, a poll apparently a few weeks ago of the coolest retro cars of 2023 and this, the Volvo 700, is in the top five coolest cars of 2023. 
bet you didn't know that. It makes me feel quite warm and fuzzy inside. I've just noticed one more thing I need to do. This black goop is from, I think this windscreen was changed at some point before I got the car. And this is just horrible and it's leaking down and I can't do anything about it. I to, well, I can do anything about it. I can clean this off here, try and clean this off the headlining. This is my new headlining actually fitted during lockdown. Um, and then try and, uh, yuck, got on me now. That's exactly how I got it on the headlining. I've gone up to touch it and then it goes in your finger and you touch the ceiling. Yeah, brake cleaner, we'll clean that off. Right, so I'm gonna start with the radio just because. Um, yeah, I've jumped over to the GoPro, so if the audio goes weird like it did in the um, Traction of On video, I do apologize. In fact, I'm gonna be, in fact, I'll be dubbing it over if it has because the media mod, which is what the microphone plugs into, is the part that's gone wrong. And it's already only recording on one channel, so I'm already having to mess around with it. Hopefully it'll survive one last video before the replacement arrives. So this is easy to remove just because it just slides out of that. Now this is, what is this model? This is the, I think, uh, SWMM2. I think this is one that came from a viewer in Junk in the Trunk. Had a few radios turn up over a period of a few months. And uh, one of them is still in the 200 VI. This is another one, which I think I'm pretty certain. Or did I buy this one off Amazon? Either way, I don't know it's particularly expensive, but it was quite feature loaded. So you've got USBs, you've got Bluetooth, um, you've got lots of other things. Um, now this is where things get complicated because I changed the speakers in these doors. I could probably cut this off. Yes, it now has got some rather nice Alpines in there instead of the utterly dead um, speakers that were there before, but also because the wiring was a bit there, I changed that as well. So this is why we have got to the issues we now have got. So it's not just a matter of unplugging the adapter from the Volvo wiring loop. I do in fact have to, oops. Yeah, this is the thing I actually went and bought. This is Volvo specific adapter to standard ISO DIN, whatever you want to call it, stuff. Let's get this security cage out of the way because that is lacerating on the fingers. All right, that is now removed. So one less razor to cut my hands on. And this can also pop out as well. This is only clipped in by, I don't remember what. Incidentally, I did use or acquire an antenna extension because the lead that goes to the Volvo radio is insanely short, making putting the radio in and out really quite tricky. There we go, clips on the side of that. I might come back to this at a later date with one of those uh, rather nice Blaupunkt retro style radios, which is also what I'm definitely going to put in the W123. Okay, so where are we at? Right, did a little bit of looking. So here are all the speaker wires, and this is why I didn't put this back previously, because Okay, this is a bit of a mess to be perfectly honest because there's all the wires from the radio into the car through this loom here. Because I put new speakers in the front doors, I've now got new speaker wires going through them so they bypass that. So I've had to jury rig them into there just to check I'm going into the right place. I actually used information from VHS Chloe um, from back when uh, she was doing the, um, the work on my car. I Googled this model of radio and what popped up? Her thing about how to fix it. So at least I know which pin was which. Clickety clickety. Oh, it worked a moment ago. Okay, merely taping wires together doesn't always work, it would appear. Right, okay, so I've done a little bit of uh, budgery pokery here with some crimpy up to connectors. Now let's see if this actually works. Okay, it works on the passenger side again. And the cassette works as well. Although it is not something I can play you because it's an old A-Team <laughs> story tape from about 1984. Uh, 83 in fact, looking at the date, uh, found in the loft. And um, yeah, not been played in quite a long time that, but it does work. So now just to figure out why I'm getting no audio on the driver's side. Uh, fixed. Thanks to the very, very technical uh, fact that I'd connected up the old speaker wires, not the new speaker wires, which had fallen into the door. So yeah, that's the reason I only have speakers on one side, but now I've got dual stereo speakers. 
on both sides of the car. I can't play it because obviously copyright music, but yay, Volvo radio working lovely and clear actually. So there we go, we now have the Volvo dashboard put back together as Jan's Vilsgaard intended all those years ago with a working auto reverse cassette deck, which actually sounds really nice, which I can turn up and listen to myself, but you can't share it with me sadly because copyright music, lovely little green glow in that as well. Okay, next up on my to-do list is this, the mirror. So I'll pop this off the car so I can paint this mount, make it look nice. And this is actually surprisingly easy to remove from the car. And it's actually even easier on the car with electric mirrors than it is on the manual car because, or manual mirrored car I should say, because there's no switch in the middle of this panel, it just, just leaves out. It says use a screwdriver, but honestly, you can do it with your fingers. Oh good, I've broken another bit of trim because it's all just so fragile. Got a 30 year old Volvo front trim is not the best to remove. Then you want an eight millimeter socket and an extension bar. And with those two out, there's just one more concealed in the door shut itself. Same color as the body works, it's a little hard to see, but it's there. What I've just found though, is that unlike any car I've ever taken apart before, there's not a plug to connect the mirror electrics to the loom inside here. It's all inside there. So I've got to do the next stage, which is jumping ahead to take the door card off. So the door card is only held on in a couple of places actually. There's a little blanking plate underneath there and also you have to un remove this little plug just here to take the door latch off. Then there's a, a Torx screw underneath there. You need to lever out this lens here and there's a, I think just that helps hold it in place. And underneath the door, kind of hard to see but there are three white plastic tabs which just lever down. So we'll pop them all out and get the door off. Right, after searching around a bit, I actually found that I can get needle um, circlet pliers into the little hole. It's a one millimeter hole in the end of this thing. And that lifts that out. Put it somewhere safe because you want that to get back in again. I actually saw a Swedish guy do that with circlet pliers. And I thought, well, what's he messing around at with circlet pliers? That looks ridiculous. Turns out the only thing you can do the job with. There is a cross point screw underneath here and you need to remove this lever here so this plastic panel here can come out. There we go, takes a little bit of force to get that out, but that's now free. Mind you, it has been on there for 35 years. So now there's the thing that sits behind that switch, a bit of bent metal. And it should leave up and out, and it does have a few cracks in it already. Oh, it's got a crack here in the middle, crack on the end. Okay, so it's actually coming apart. So my attempts not to break it were sadly fruitless because it was already broken. Every bit of plastic in this car is just made of cheese. That comes out more blue plastic I need to go and find. I could actually do with a new one of these because the mirrors don't work as well. Something else to go and locate. And I think I might be missing a screw just here because the guide said a T10 Torx but I can't see anything to undo down there. Then carefully we lever this lamp lens out. There we go. These should just lever down apparently and so they do. And here is number two. Whoops. Easy. And number three. Now I'm sure I've missed something, but it should just lift off now. Well, there we go. Up and away. All right, they'll fit through there. Cool, just a wiring connector. The end of the door light. Now, although I did say, oh, it's just the, uh, <laughs> The wiring for the, the light it should have been the speaker as well but that had uh, managed to disconnect itself when i lifted the uh, door out so now the reason we're actually in the door in the first place yuck that's covered in sticky glue is this wire just here so i can take the the, uh, the loud not the mirror what i in the wrong words <laughs> the, yeah the door mirror off i was gonna say the loudspeaker loudspeakers on the brain that is so covered in goo it's disgusting why Volvo? Why did you fill everything with glue? Oh, this is the same glue that's up in the ceiling. Maybe it hasn't had a new windscreen. Maybe this is just factory glue that they're just really generous with. These are big old connectors and chunky, chunky wires. A modern car has been like a tenth of the size. Yeah, so gooey that the um, screwdriver is actually remaining as part of that. Okay, that's fine. Ta-da! One free mirror. So now. Let's give this a bit of a shakedown. So, we'll pick off this remaining... 
looks like plasti dip almost. We'll pick this stuff off, give it a quick gentle rub over with some sandpaper. Handy screwdriver holder. So yeah, I'll just smooth this over with a bit of sandpaper. Right, let's just scuff up the rough metal. I think it's cast aluminium by the feel of it. Some 80 grit, just to get the uh, surface corrosion off. So obviously you don't want to paint onto a flaky surface. So we've got this thing all masked up. So the mirror will not get painted and can still be used as a mirror afterwards. So let's give this a bit of a, a squirtle over in our impromptu paint booth. This is etch primer, because whenever you're painting onto something a bit annoying, you etch it first with etch primer. Hopefully a couple of light coats will do the trick. Well, that actually looks quite presentable now, so I'm gonna go in with um, some satin black now. I think looking at the mirror housing being plastic, I wonder if it was like an early kind of plasti dip type substance that they coated the aluminium with. I don't have any plasti dip. Uh, maybe I'll come back and redo it in plasti dip at a later date, but for the moment, satin black will look an awful lot better than rotting aluminium. Now I need to hang it somewhere like this until it dries. Right, so now while that paint is drying, we're gonna replace this broken and tatty door pocket. So this is the replacement um, door pocket to a lower section entirely of the door card, in fact, which has got a bunch of screw holes, which I will then be screwing to the car in a second. But first of all, before we do that, we've got this headlining material, which is like a foam backed stuff. So with this, I'll cut out neatly in a second. I did have some scissors a moment ago, which I've Fortunate, ah, oh, found them, here we are. Cut this to fit. This all worked as sound deadening. This is not ideal. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just make the whole thing generally more pleasant. You can wrap it around the bottom, it'll feel like a very premium thing. I like the word premium. But anyway, it turns out this stuff is actually really quite hard to, to, uh, to cut. Um, but I've got some super stick multi-purpose adhesive. I do have some proper fabric adhesive which is what I was using for gluing this stuff onto the, um, the ceiling of cars. Uh, but I've left that over in the barn because I was planning on doing this job over in the barn. Never quite got around to it. It doesn't matter, it's not the most tidy thing in the world because you will not be able to see it inside the door. But it'll make the door less clangy, less echoey. And be more like a nice feel when you put your hand in there to get stuff out. Wow, this super stick stuff really is super sticky. <laughs> I've gone on with a couple of creases and it will not come out. And the other good thing about this is because this is such a brittle thing, Adding a layer of, of fabric support on the back of there will give a bit of strength to this and a bit of flexibility, so hopefully it'll be less inclined to shatter. I'll put some in there as well for extra, well, anti-shatter. Right, now the door pocket itself is only held on by a bunch of screws by the looks of things. So if we undo all these screws here, we should find ourselves with access, well, not access to anything, <laughs> the, the door card pocket falling off which would be uh, a good thing in this particular case. Now I would guess this has not come off in the entire time this car has been on the road, which is like 35 odd years, the first time this has all come apart. This is some kind of compressed fibre board, very Ikea. So now this should fall off. Don't think I've missed any connectors. Oh, one there. Always one more screw. You never just yank stuff because there's always one more you missed. There we go. Right, so now just line this back up on the other side and put all the screws back in to make it all be fitting. 
that is really quite easy. That's the great thing with like 1980s cars and that kind of period. They look and feel modern, but at the same time, they're really, really simple to work on. Right, so we have gone from that, which is obviously a matching blue, but very broken, to that, which is a contrast gray, but it does match the speaker grill, which I'll just quickly pop on to show you. There we go. So it does at least match the speaker grill, which claims to be a Volvo HT 223, but in fact, it's an Alpine. Um, but yeah, and with that nice sort of padding behind there, it feels a bit more premium, a bit soft and nice when you put your hand in there. Right, so before we put our new door card back on, this is a moment of truth to see how our completed mirror looks. I'm not gonna lacquer it, because it's matte or satin look. And you don't want shiny satin, do you? And I'm tempted, I wanna see how this looks, see how much of a, a contrast there is. So yeah, the, the mounting's a little bit darker, but it doesn't look bad though. But yeah, once I've covered this in uh, Diamond Bright Rejuvenate to get this all looking super shiny black, that'll actually blend in quite well. Right, let's get this thing back on the car. And feed that through the door, which goes down. That's gonna be tricky, bit, actually. That goes down through the hole. There we go, into the door itself, into the body of the door. There we go. Oh, that's not too bad, actually. It's not even harder than that. He says, frantically fridging it around to find it. And that can pop into there. So our three bolts back on there. Make sure the thing's all lined up neatly, then we can tighten it all up. And I've not mentioned this in a while, but if you hit the uh, link in the description below down to Amazon, all the tools I'm using, or most of them anyway, will be listed on the Amazon affiliate tool page. So let's just pop that in there, connect that back on there. I'll put the ignition on, see if the electric mirror works now. I'd be amazed if it did, because it didn't work before. In fact, while I've got this here, let's take this out and fill it with uh, electrical contact cleaner. Because you never know, that might actually set it to working again. These pins are actually quite corroded looking. All right, so just seeing whether it's the switch or the circuit that's at fault. Now I've got this as the earth one just here earth pin so if I hold the switch over to one side with my other finger there we go that pin there is making a circuit when I'm pushing it one way let's try another way okay oh no, that's me touching you know what I think is actually is the, uh, the switch at fault in that case because I'm only getting movement in one direction or a circuit in one direction. I'm going to have to go and find a new switch on eBay. Let's reconnect everything. We're starting with the loudspeakers. Speaker, I should say. It would explain why we only have one speaker working all the way through Sweden. And that would be because uh, the wires had come off. Not quite sure when that happened, but it did. And we just lower everything. Oops. Nah. There's some little hooks that hook over the top of the door. That needs to go through there. There we go. And that then should all just clunk into place around the side of the... There we go. We've got our three little clips to clip back in the bottom of the door. They literally just push in and clip into place. I say number three, but I can't find it. Three, here we go. So I'm now officially looking for a new one of these and a mirror switch, if anyone happens to have one around. So now we have a nice, not broken, door pocket for the first time in three years that I've had this car. I'll give that a little clean up later on. And we've now got a nice, smooth, black, surround on the mirror, which is much nicer than it was before. Big improvement all round, inside and out. So there we go, the passenger's door pocket is also ready to go on, but I'll pop that on there off camera a little later on. The only thing I haven't done all day is get a bit of a braking clutch cleaner to wipe that bit of goop off, but I can do that later on. But so overall, today has been pretty successful. We've done everything pretty much we said we would do. We've now got lovely black door mirror, which doesn't look embarrassingly scabby anymore. We've got not broken 
door pocket, whoops, don't close on me, which has even got a nice little bit of padding in the back of it, so it won't rattle, feels nicer, maybe won't crack quite as much. I do need to go and change the other one on the other side still, but you know, it's been a busy day doing all the other stuff. I'll come back to that. And we've now got the original radio back in the car and working thanks to Chloe. Um, if you want to check out the work on that thing, it's VHS Chloe on that there Twitter. Yeah, all good indeed, all very good indeed. A few more jobs to do on this car because it's like an ongoing, never ending task, really, getting this a car 30, 40 years old. Uh, keeping up to snuff, but yeah, I wanted to make it look as nice as possible because when Barry does the prom on Friday, I want it to look nice. So I'll give it a, another wash in the next couple of days, black up all the tyres and bumpers and things, and it will look really rather pleasant indeed. Obviously, I do need at some point to go around the car and touch in all these little chips and things, little scabs just there, and repaint the, the wheels because um, it's got those lovely stainless steel hubcaps on there, but uh, yeah rotten wheels underneath but overall i'm happy it's a success for once game over good day's work anyway as usual uh thank you for watching and like and subscribe that makes a big difference to the youtube algorithm that kind of stuff matters as you know head over to furiousdriven.co.uk you can find hats actually these are sold out so not these hats t-shirts badges stickers um New shiny round Fear of Striving stickers need to be added there tonight. And what else is there? Oh yeah, head over to Amazon.co.uk. We find all the tools and things. All the stuff, all the links, all in the description below and uh, the sponsors and all the rest of it. Thank you for watching and see you again next time. Goodbye.